Alright, hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be going over vaulted ceilings in Hot 2000, so we'll be covering the SketchUp as well as the Hot 2000 entry stuff, and we'll talk about the difference between new and existing homes and what you got to put in. So uh, let's jump right in. Okay, so we're going to start with the SketchUp here. You could also pretend that these are your perimeter drawings you did on your paper sketches. And basically what you're looking for, let's say we've got a vaulted ceiling here on this side. Um, generally on my sketch, I like to draw... And you don't have to do this in SketchUp, but in your sketch you'd want to have, say, like a little dotted line. Just so you know which way the slope's going. If it's right down the middle, you know, it'd be something like that. And of course you'd want to have, you know, your dimensions. Obviously, like this. And of course for the entire floor as well. And if it's right in the middle, I just draw the dotted line. But you could also, you know, dimension that it's directly halfway. Um, so your sketch on your paper drawing will look something like this, and then in SketchUp, because you've also got your paper drawing as reference, you know, something like that's fine. And then, basically what you're going to need in terms of actual measurements is the height of the wall before it starts sloping, the width and length of the area, and then if it slopes right to the center, you just need from the midpoint how tall is the slope, and then you're going to be able to draw that in in SketchUp. And if you've got something like this, where you've got a bit of a flat ceiling on top, um, you've got slopes and then flat, um, basically the only difference is you need, once again, the height of where it hits, and then as well as just how far out before it becomes flat. So if you're able to measure that, you might also be able to measure this instead. And then we could draw that in SketchUp as well. So pretty easy, pretty similar. The only difference really is how far out before it becomes flat from the slope. And then we'll just cover drawing these super quick. So I'm just gonna delete all of this. Once you've got your little section, this is gonna be our cathedral. Normally we would draw it right on here. And then what we had was that it become, it's 12 feet or it slopes straight up. So I just click here, 12 feet. And then I'm just gonna connect to each side like so. And I'm going to delete this little middle line and this line for now, because then this way when I use the push-pull tool, I'm going to be able to click on this, move over, and you can actually see if I get it right to that line, it'll stop. So now we've got that drawn on. And if we were doing the other one, basically all we need to do is come over three feet here. That's going to make a little end point for us. We can double check that's three. We can draw straight down to the bottom, and then I said, let's say it's 12 feet again. Let me go up, and then we would do the same on the other side. Let's go three. Draw up from the bottom, 12 again. Attach to the side, and then connect these two. And then we just get rid of these lines, and then we can push this back, like so. So that's how you draw them in SketchUp. Okay, I should also mention, um, if you're doing existing home construction, when we're creating the gable, if you've measured it from the inside of the house, that's great. You can use those measurements to get basically your slope. And then in HA2000, the ERS manual does say you can use the default slope of 412 all the time. Um, if you're doing new home construction, and say on the plans, they provided you with the um, cathedral or vaulted ceiling roof slope, um, what you can do is go to Tools, Go to Protractor, and then if we can get it lined up, you click. You don't hold, you just always click. There's never really any holding in SketchUp. Um, click. Click on the line once. Just pull up, like so. And then if we type, say our slope was 712. So we go 7 colon 12, which you can see down in the bottom right corner. And hit Enter. And then on, we go to the other corner. Click, click on the line, pull up, go 7, 12. Now we've got our actual roof slope, and then we just connect it like so, and then we would just push that over like that, and then we can just erase these lines. So if you're doing new home construction, you can put in the actual slope. If you're doing existing home construction, basically you just want to measure this here to have it. And then for entering, um, 
in HA2000, if this bit of gable is the exact same makeup as this wall, so if they have the same exterior finish, same insulation, uh, same interior finish, same studs, everything, uh, we can combine these areas together. And an easy way to do that, so if you want to do the whole second floor as its own wall, um, you can see here, normally it'd be 8 feet times the entire perimeter, but because of the gable, we need to get an average height, so you just control click all the way around. And we've got 874 square feet, so we would just take that, 874, and then we divide it by the full perimeter. So if I get rid of this line, the full perimeter of the second floor, so 874 divided by our 104 feet, which you can see up here. Our average height is 8.40. So we could put in for the entire second floor, we can build it with the gable wall included, and we just use the height of 8.4 by the full perimeter of 104 for the wall. And then also to note, um, this wall area here, I call this attic wall. And basically it's gonna be the same um, studs as what you'd have for your walls, and you're gonna have gypsum on the inside. So if you're actually you know, standing in here, you would see gypsum there. And then most likely on the other side, you're not going to have any sheathing or any exterior finish and probably just the same insulation that's in the walls. If it's a new home, however, it might have extra insulation. Um, if you can't see it, um, just assume it has the same as the walls. You might be able to get up in this attic space and look over and you can see there's bats in there. Maybe there's two layers of bats or maybe it's spray foam, maybe it's rigid foam, who knows. Um, but if you can't see it, just assume it's the same as the walls. And then to put that wall in, we would just do 42 feet squared divided by the full bottom perimeter. And you want to use the full perimeter because that's going to tell HA2000 how many studs are in this wall for thermal bridging. So it would just be 42 divided by 21. So we'd just have a height of 2, our average height for the wall. And then we would use the 21 feet for our perimeter. Um, but we'll cover that in HA2000 here in a sec. And then if we were entering in, say, this was our ceiling, you would want to enter these ceilings in as slopes. Um, they could either be cathedral or scissor truss. Um, if you don't know, assume it's cathedral. If you do know, um, you can put in a scissor. And basically with scissor truss, the inside slope is different than the exterior, like outside roof slope of the house. And that's because you can get more insulation in there that way. And with HA2000, if you put in a cathedral ceiling and you say, you know, it's two by six trusses, it's going to assume that there's only the six inch cavity for insulation. If you say it's a scissor truss, and even if you said it was two by six, it's going to know that there's nothing preventing you from having more insulation than six inches. So you could have, you know, R50 in a scissor truss can't really have R50 in a cathedral unless you've got a 20 inch cavity. So you need to have like, you know, two by 20s. Um, and then this would get entered in as either a gable or a hip roof depending. And then this would also get entered as a gable or a hip roof depending. All right, let's just hop over to Hot 2000. And I'll just show you what I mean too. So this would be considered a standard attic gable, so when you're in the house, you've got a flat ceiling above your head, and then above that, the roof space, you actually got a sloped roof, but that's where the shingles are, but when you go up in the cavity, you've got the insulation sitting flat. So sometimes people will mistakenly enter this as a flat roof in HA2000, but this is what HA2000 means by a flat roof, where the roof itself is actually flat not where in SketchUp you have your flat roof. So that's the difference there. So we're gonna start here. We'll do the vaulted ceiling first. So all we really need to do is get our surface area. So a control click, 348.32, 348.32. And then for the eaves, basically they're looking for where can there be compression with the insulation with a slope ceiling. It's, you know, it's always gonna be the bottom sides of the slopes. So we can just click both those sides, so 31 for our length. And if you're doing an existing home, you can leave the roof slope 412, or 
You could print uh, something like this onto a transparent plastic sheet, which uh, actually lets you hold up. You could hold up to a photo and see the roof slope, but you are allowed to use the default 412. And then for heel height, uh, for existing homes, if the house was built before 1990, the heel height is 0 0.33 feet. If the house is 1990 or newer, we use 0 0.43 for the heel height. And those are what you always use. Um, and then in this case, we could enter this. If we didn't know if it was a scissor truss or not, we would enter it as cathedral. Go to our code type, go to new code. And then depending on the age of the house, um, we're gonna either pick probably one of these options. Um, so let's say maybe it's a two by six, 16 inches on center, generally default. Maybe it's got our 20 bats in it. And then for the interior, it's most likely gonna be gypsum and strapping. You might have you know a wood finish or something else on the inside. But I generally it's gonna be gypsum plus non-insulated strapping and we'd hit okay. And we'd basically be done. So what we can go over now, let's say this is a gable, so maybe there's eaves on the left and right. If it was a hip, we'd have compression on all three sides essentially. There wouldn't be any compression on this side because there's a wall next to it, so you're able to add insulation up higher. Um, well, let's pretend that this is a gable. So add a gable. Our length here is gonna be 31 again. That's our area there. 325.5. We can leave the roof slope default again, the heel height depending on the age. And then we can just go new code. Um, and most attics we've come across here in the Maritimes are typically, you get two by four. So this isn't the joists you see when you're in the attic that are you know holding up the actual roof with the shingles, but it's the joists where the insulation itself is sitting. Typically they're two by four and usually they're 24 inches on center. And then here we'd come down and we try and find the R value that best represents the amount of inches we have. So let's say maybe they had R28 blown cellulose in there. And then the interior again is most likely gonna be gypsum plus non-insulated strapping. I'll just hit okay so that we build it that way. And if we were doing a scissor truss, you can see it's the same code that I used for gable because with scissor trusses, it's letting it lets it know that there's more room available than just the cavity itself. If we switch this to cathedral, you can see my code goes away. And if we were to build a cathedral and say, let's say it had two by six, 16 on center. Well, let's say we told it that there was our 40 in there. So that's an 11 inch bat or 11.8 inches. But what it, Hot 2000 is thinking is that's getting shoved into that six inch cavity. So if we pick that, pick our interior finish, hit okay. Um, the effective R value you can see here is actually quite low. You know, it should be in the 30s. It shouldn't be 17, but that's because it's being compressed. We switch that to scissor truss, just like before. You can see, even though we're picking two by four, 24 inches, and we're saying we've got 11 inches of insulation. It knows that there's enough room for that to sit there. So we'll hit OK. Just got to click off and on again for it to calculate. So you can see now our effective R value is 36.4. All right, so that's just a quick little intro into vaulted ceilings and just ceilings in general. Um, if you have any other questions, please let me know. We can cover other other things to do with ceilings or to do with walls. I'm hoping to make a video where we go through every single component and it's gonna be quite a long video or maybe I'll break it up into different videos. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, thanks for watching and have yourselves a good day.